Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. Today I want to talk about books. Um, My father-in-law recently passed away, and we were down trying to go through his old stuff, and he had quite a few books. I'm estimating four or 500 books, all of them in really good condition, probably because it didn't look like he had read any of the books. So he had liked to purchase them and purchase those books and have them on hand, but there wasn't any evidence that he had read any of the books in there. And so it got me thinking about books in general, especially with COVID with all the Zoom calls and seeing people's background with their books started to wonder, I wonder how many of those books have been read as well. And I started to think about the entire value stream of a book and all that goes into producing a hardcover or paperback book and the environmental impact. And then to think about, I wonder what that percentage is of unread books that people have purchased or acquired. My guess is that it's not very a high percentage. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like it's it's easy to acquire a book, but you have to go to the next step and actually read it. And so I did a little searching on Reddit and saw a post about unread books. And there was some similar type of numbers there. My estimate from my father-in-law was that he maybe read 1%, a couple percentage of those books, maybe a, a dozen, or maybe partially read some of those, but the majority of them were not read. So let's say that half the books get read just as a general number. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I didn't find any studies that talked about this, but that's still a lot of books that were produced, shipped, and then sit on a shelf. And then let's go to the next step. Let's say you did read the book. How much of that information did you retain? Did you breeze through the books? And then at the end say, huh, I wonder what I recall or will remember about this book. Did I have any takeaways from that book? And I'm kind of talking about business books, process improvement books, something that's more uh, nonfiction, but even a fiction book. Do you remember the whole story when you were done? Could you recite it now, the books you read? And so I started thinking about, okay, the, the value you're getting out of the book, because you purchase a book probably to for entertainment maybe, or to learn something. And so if we're not reading or capturing or remembering the information, that seems like a lot of waste too. And then as we're trying to get rid of the books, you know, people were saying, I'll take them. And I really doubt that those will get read either, especially when you acquire them for free, then you feel like you didn't really have to invest anything, but they take up a lot of space and they were very heavy and I moved them a couple of times. So it wasn't the funnest experience. And so we end up donating them and hope that they go to somewhere where they do get read. But my guess is they probably won't because I think there's a lot of books on our shelves and and I'm just as guilty. I've got books that I haven't gotten to yet that I purchased. It's a smaller list, maybe a dozen, but that's still a lot. And so I I just started to think about the amount of space that books take up in our, our world. And maybe that's a challenge that we could work on is uh, to, to start practicing lean methods or 5S methods, maybe we tackle it with a book challenge. And the way I was thinking about this challenge would be we can go and first gather all your books, put them all in one spot so you at least can see the problem. Next is to count up all the books. And then of all those books, which ones have you actually read? Or And then if you've read it, did you read it more than once? Or did you partially read it or you're not quite done with it, but that was months or years ago. So you're probably not going to read it anyways. And then look at the ones that you haven't read at all. And of those books um, that you have read, did you take any action on them? Or do you remember something about that book? Or can you explain the story if it's something like a fiction book? And then take a look at that data and see what your percentage looks like. I think it'll be a lot worse than people realize. And then let's let's get people to read the book. I mean, you already have it. Let's put some time into it. 
So this could be an example of setting a daily routine. And let's look at the behaviors that will be required for you to start to read more. And this could be part of the, the Kata method where you can set up an, an experimenting record to track, here are the things I'm gonna do to try to start reading more. And then each day look to see, did I actually read today? And if not, what was the barrier? What got in the way of me reading? And what am I gonna do next time to try to break through that? Do I need to move the book next to my nightstand? Do I need to get in bed earlier? Do I need to leave my phone in another room? What are those things that are preventing you from reading those books? And then decide which are those books that you actually plan to read. And if you don't plan to read it and you've already read it, why do you still have it? Is it for status symbol? Is it for reference? Is it because you think you were going to read it someday? If not, let's get rid of it, find a home for it, and free up that space. So I thought that might be a good little activity to try and learn some lean principles and also address what I think is maybe um, an inefficiency in this whole system. And I struggle with reading books myself. In fact, I have really become a huge fan of audiobooks. I rarely will even get a book unless it's in audio format because I struggle to sit down and, and read. But since I've gotten a Audible account and uh, also am using Libro FM, it's another service. So I have like one book from each a month. So I'm going through quite a few books a year now, 20 to 30 books. Um, that I never would have gotten done in the past. I mean, unless it was required for school, I barely read it until I got into the business world. And then I started reading a lot more business type books. And so maybe that's the thing is of the books that you have on your shelf, can you convert those over to books that you'll listen to on audio? And maybe that's one way to address it. So anyways, this got me really thinking about books in general. I was also uh, listening to Joy at Work, which is a book from Marie Kondo. It's a follow on to some of her earlier books. And I really like her methodologies. And I write about how she uses 5S type methods in her uh, activities to spark joy and evaluate what things need to stay in your home. And so I'll link to that article in the notes. But she recommends something similar is to gather all the books in one place. But she says, take each one in your hands and ask if you've read it. Uh, when did you buy it or when did you get it? And if you plan to read it, what day will you read it by? Set yourself a goal there. And if you had the chance, would you still buy it today? Or did you get it as a gift? Who did you get it from? And if you liked the book and you did read it, how many times have you read it? And do you plan to read it again? And what role does this book play and, or provide in your life? And so she doesn't really set any kind of limit for people on how many books they should keep. But if it sparks joy and it's a good book, then she says, hold on to it. That's that's important. But for everything else, maybe it doesn't belong. It's taking up space. It's, it's creating clutter. It's inventory, especially if it's unread. It might even be in inventory if you've already read it and you don't plan to read it again. Because now you're maybe keeping someone else from having the chance to read it. But this really just got me thinking about books in general this last couple of months. I would say as, you know, for authors to see that they've sold 10,000 books, let's say, I think that'd be really a, a depressing for them to hear that maybe only half of those books were actually read and people just bought them because they were planning on it or wanting to, or got it for somebody else, but they just sat on a shelf. And I remember when I'd go to people's offices and they'd see a bookshelf full of books. And I really wonder, that they read these or they're just displaying them to make it seem like they've read them and understood them. So I think that's where there's a real psychology there at play. And just be curious to see what people think about this idea and concept. So please reach out if you are interested in maybe a book challenge. And if so, I can set something up, something up for maybe the beginning of the year or late this year and see if that can spark some activity. I'll also link out to the Lean at Home which is a, a course, online course I set up. It's about two hours, but it also talks about how you can apply lean concepts to your personal life. And so that's free to access. And I have a challenge in there to complete a lean at home project and submit that in for a certification. So I hope you found this interesting and helpful. 
like to hear your comments, you can reach me through the Anchor app and you can send a message there, or you can reach me through the website at biz-pi.com. Thanks for your time. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.